What makes these paintings special is it's actually the, the first one that I've gotten as a member of the Hall of Fame. It'll probably go downstairs in the man cave. Junior, so you were such a transcendent player of your generation and you had this larger than life persona. Did you realize that you were having such an impact on the youth while you were playing or, or did it more happen after your career was done? Combination of both. Uh, I can tell you that being 19 years old in the big league helps because people can relate to that who are, you know, 16 to 19, uh, even 20. Um, you're relatable. And I think that's the, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, for me as a kid, I can go out and show everybody, hey, it's a game, you can have fun, and it doesn't matter how old you are. I was 19, so I was relatable, you know, basically a year out of high school. Mm -hmm. Graduated 18, you know, next year I'm sitting there, you know, playing with grown men, you know, who have families, and I'm just having the time of my life, and people could see it. Um, as I got older, I started to understand my place in baseball, my place in history. Had my first glimpse of it actually when I was 20 when my dad played with me. Is I, we went back to back home runs. Him being, you know, on the tail end of his career and me just starting really. Um, him sitting there talking about, you know, we did. And I was like, no, nah, yeah, we went back to back. And, and I'm like focused on the game and he's over there like, you know, that's never been done before. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, uh, let's play baseball, you know, and I'm focused on that. And he's like, and he's hitting me like, hey, this is something, yeah. And it really didn't hit me until I started passing, uh, you know, like Frank Robinson on the home run chart and, and, and things like that. And uh, Reggie Jackson and Mickey Mantle. And then I started thinking like, now I understand what my dad was talking about but I didn't realize that at 19 or 20, I was just like, I'm gonna go out there and play. Right. Um, but then you start, like I said, you start reflecting like, oh my, I'm mentioned with the same name as some of the greatest who've ever played. Growing up, I played a little myself and you know, there was so many kids in my neighborhood era, an era that their favorite player was, was you. And uh, there's so many, you know, of us that really tried to model our game after what you were doing. You know, you had this confidence and swagger about you. I tried to get that same swagger in this shot here. Hope I achieved that. That was the most important part to me to depict here. And I'm curious if you had a player like that that you looked up to. I tell you what, I was in the fourth grade and we did a talent show. And at the time my dad was playing with the Reds. I was imitating, you know, we did take me out to the ball game and then I imitated every red player batting stance. Mm -hmm. And after the show, my dad was like, hey, come here. And I was like, what? He said, hey, uh, all those names are taken for a reason. Just be you. And from that point on, you know, I was a fourth grade. You know, it was like, come up with your own style. Be you. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, the hat backwards thing was not like intentional. It just happened. And the reason why is what does every kid want to wear their dad's stuff? Well, my dad had a fro. I had a little peanut head. Every time the front of the hat would hit me in the face. So I just turned it around and it just stuck. And so even now, you know, I get in the car, first thing, hat backwards. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I pick up a brand new hat, hat backwards. And there was like, you still, I said, had, you know, old habits are hard to break. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, anybody who shows you the joy of the game could be a trendsetter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, we're playing a game. It's not life and death. Um, but we want to go out there and compete and compete as hard as we can. But, you know, you realize that there are other people out here who have real struggles. And, uh, you know, so there's days where, you know, I come in and, you know, I take myself too serious and I just remember all the things that other people are going through and usually a shake out of it, you know, just a little, okay, we can go ahead and do this. You know, if somebody else is fighting, you know, fighting for their life, you know, I'm just fighting to hit a baseball. I've been doing this for 
quite some time and I, to a degree, will wow myself. <laughs> like, this started from blank canvas and then from just a simple, you know, brush and mixing paints, you know, I, I, I kind of look back, not in the moment of painting it, but I'll kind of catch afterwards and really be like, I can't, can't believe I really did this. And, you know, I played center field myself and there was a ball in the gap and I was actually in the middle of the dive and the left fielder cut in front and the ball tipped off his glove and I had to react in the air and actually caught the ball like between my forearm and bicep and I, it was the last out of the inning and I was running back into the dugout and tossed the ball to the umpire and he was laughing and goes to me, did you really catch the ball there? And I kind of gave the Michael Jordan, yeah. And, and that was like kind of a moment where I was, was like, wow, I can't believe I really did that. Do you remember like a play or a, maybe a milestone that you achieved that you were kind of like, I can't believe I really, you wowed yourself. First time I hit 50. My rookie year, I had Jeffrey Leonard. You know, we were talking about, you know, what are the numbers would you like to achieve? Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, and this time man, I got eight home runs. <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, I want to hit 50 and steal 20 in one year and uh, hit over 300. And he goes, you know, that's Hall of Fame numbers. And he goes, you know, if you hit 20 in the big leagues, you got pop. You hit 30, you're a monster. You hit 40, you're ungodly. You hit 50, you're a legendary status. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, when I hit it, I started laughing. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had the same look when I run around the bases, but I hit it. <laughs> Shook my head because I, I was like, there it is. Probably the biggest challenges are, you know, the day in and day out grind, trying to figure out, you know, the next pitcher, the next pitch, when you don't feel like doing it, but you know you have to. Basically, day in and day out, it's a, it's work. Never take a day off, and when you're done, you can reflect. In high school, I took a lot of advanced art classes, and I just remember drawing so many figures of yourself and some of the other stars. My two dreams were try to be a baseball player. And my second was, you know, being a professional sports artist. Sitting here with you today, it just puts things kind of in perspective and a full circle. And uh, it's really an honor to be here with you. And, and I appreciate that. Thank you.